And welcome to another Bancroft Brothers Animation Podcast, Tony. Yes, and it's good to be back, Tom. For those that don't know, this is a podcast by two twin brothers that have uh, an extensive career in the animation industry. And we just love to talk about animation and get geeky and interview people that we respect and admire. Um, that's it in a nutshell. The Bancroft Brothers Animation Podcast has been going for six years. We're on iTunes, Spotify, and Tom, you know what? We got a Patreon page that's burgeoning. Is it? Is it? Um, is it because it's uh, it's ripe and ready to be sacrificed at a volcano? Yeah, it's not a virgin. No, it's burgeoning, oh. meaning it's like it's like growing and it's like going to explode. And what we really want is uh, any of our fans out there to join us on our Patreon page. Yes, you guys please. can help support the podcast too at the Bancroft Brothers Animation Podcast on Patreon. Check us and out. And hopefully by the time this comes out, Tony, we will have added uh, some new tiers to that Patreon, one of which will be new videos that are, that are going to be exclusive to our Patreon of us drawing or giving sort of drawing tips. Uh, Advice, videos. maybe telling old stories about the Disney days. People like I, those, Tom. Yeah, I, I, I like know. <laughs> I like the ones that are true, too. <laughs> Hey, tonight, um, I am super excited, as always, Tom, um, because we have a guest that both you and I have admired from a distance and yet never got to meet until tonight. And that's wow. why that makes this makes uh, this episode so special, because tonight we are interviewing and sitting with, via Zoom, of course, the magic of Zoom, uh, Christoph Saran, animator extraordinaire, Christoph Saran. Let's hear it for him. Hi, Christoph. Hi, Christoph. Oh, thank you. Hi, guys. Thank uh, you. How, thank how you. is it in France right now? What's the weather like? Oh, uh, it's not that great. It's raining a lot. It's, it's, it's kind of gray, and uh, we had a little bit of uh, sun today, but mostly gray and rainy. It's really a big change from California. Uh, well, it makes me feel better because we can't travel there to see it. So yeah. at least we know yeah. it's not pretty right now. Well, Chris, Christoph, we probably are older than you, I'm guessing, but you've, you've started out in the 2D revolution, kind of the golden years of 2D animation again, right? Um, you started out in, in uh, Europe, and then you, know, you have a body of work that traveled with you as you got hired by uh, DreamWorks and did a lot of the 2D stuff. Like, I just, I'm just going to lay this down for our, our fan base here. Uh, Christoph did uh, worked on Prince of Egypt and Sinbad and Spirit, all those wonderful DreamWorks 2D films that you guys yeah. grew up with. But before that, there was Balto, We're Back, and American Tale, Five Goes West, a yeah. bunch of the Asterix movies, of course. Uh, Europeans all worked on the Asterix movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, did I mention Shark Tale, Over the Hedge, How to Train Your Dragon? So you dipped into CG animation, it looks like. The yeah. Crudes, How to Train Your Dragon 2, Penguins of Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda 3, uh, a Bird Karma, oh, that short that they did. I love that short. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, you're a lead animator. And Abominable recently is on your IMDb list yeah. as a supervising animator. So yeah. you have made that wow. tra transition <laughs> kind of uh, back and forth a little bit, it looks like, from 2D animation to CG animation. But and you've been busy too. That is quite a lineup because that's not that yeah. far back. It's, I mean, it is eighty four, I guess, when you started, but that's a lot of films in a, in that amount of time. Yeah. Oh wow! Thank you for reminding me. This is so many things I did. It's like this is your and, life. Uh, this, is, this is my life. Yeah. Actually, I, I went back to my life because I had something to. Uh, I have the presentation to to make uh, over the weekend to this. Uh, New York Film Festival, and uh, they want me to talk about my life. So yeah, I, I went back to my even to my childhood. Oh, I wanted to know why I went into animation and why you know what made me want to go into animation. But I went I, I went into animation by chance. That's the thing. Really? You know, I went to I don't know if you know this school, this French school, Gobelin. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. This is school. I was. I, I'm an alumni from Gobelin. And I, I, I oh. went there in 1980, 81. It was wow. very small at the time. It was so small. I mean, really small in a known school. 
But when I entered that school, I, I didn't know it was an animation school. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was just an art <laughs> college, art university? university? Were you going to be an so architect? What were you going there for? Because they were doing animation there. And, you yeah. know. And so I, I started animation in 2D in the, in the early 80s in France. And then, uh, as you said, I went to uh, do the Asterix movies. And when I went to London to the animation, the Spielberg's animation studio. And, uh, and then DreamWorks. And, uh, and then, yes, I did the transition the, from hand-drawn animation to digital animation. And, and the DreamWorks, uh, so the, been, the, you know, where you did uh, We're Back and stuff like that, that, w that was in Europe, wasn't it? That was, yeah, that was in London. That was the Spielberg's uh, studio because yeah. after Roger Rabbit, Steven Spielberg wanted to keep doing animation. He, he, he had done animation with Don Bluth in the 80s, but I think they, they, parted away, they parted away. And then he was involved in Roger Rabbit and he loved animation. Yeah. And he wanted to keep doing it. Mm. And so, uh, and, and, and then uh, he opened the studio in London in 1989. And uh, so I, I, yeah. uh, I was called to. Uh, to start in the studio. So I started as a supervising animator. I remember in that studio, I didn't speak a word of English. And oh, it was wow. Clear. Really? Oh. I had to, to, to learn very fast. <laughs> well, yeah, especially if you're a supervisor, yeah. you're, you're over so, yeah, a we, group of animators. Anyway, yeah, I, so yeah, I, I had a couple of friends who were kind of, you know, yeah, a couple of friends that you were able to get together with. I think there's a little delay here, so we're going to do our best here. Um, but I guess one of the questions I have yeah, for you then. Delay for yeah. One of the questions that I have for you, Christoph, is what was it like uh, making that transition to coming out to the U.S. then when DreamWorks called? Because I remember there was a, that, that was a time when, when Disney, uh, it, there was just Disney doing animation. And then when Jeffrey Katzenberg left, with Steven Spielberg and all these guys to start their own animation company. It's not a surprise that they went to Europe first and said, we need to get all these great European animators we've already been working with. At least Steven Spielberg was like you just said. Um, but, uh, and then there was, you know, all these different European animators and artists that came into the U S and, and, um, and, you know, from our perspective as, us animators, it just seemed to be like a flood of, of great talent coming from Europe um, during that time period of the, what was it? The, you know, early mid nineties yeah. or so. Um, what was that from your side? What was that like being called by DreamWorks? Okay. Yeah. The, actually the, the funny thing is that when I, I, uh, I was in London when the animation closed down and the DreamWorks um, was created I, I was I wanted to to go back to Paris at the time, and I didn't want to go to LA because mm. I, I for some reason I was like uh, there was just one year after the Northridge earthquake. Oh, and so yeah. uh, wow. <laughs> I was a little scared about going to LA, and and also I had a nice offer for uh, from the uh, Disney studio in uh, in uh, Paris. They had a, a Disney studio in Paris at the time, you know. And mm. so I remember uh, meeting with Roy Conley and, uh, and a lot of uh, Disney people. They were in Paris and all of my friends were in Paris doing the. So I, I, I went back to Paris. I bought an apartment and I, I, I was setting up to, uh, to work at, at Disney in France, in Paris. And Jeffrey Katzenberg called. And then he, he was very persuasive. He called it a couple of times. And, and then I was like, oh, my God. And then he invited me in L.A. He was smart because if he hadn't invited me in LA, I wouldn't have come over there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and he said, you come, you see for yourself. And, and, you know, and then he kind of made it, he made it very, very nice. And then I said, okay, fine. I'll try for one movie. And uh, I stayed 25 years of it. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was, he, that was a time, uh, Tom, you remember this too. During yeah, that yeah. time, he was, Jeffrey Katzenberg was very aggressively trying to get people from yeah. Disney. So it's not surprising. I mean, they, he was doing that out here in California yeah, I, and in Florida. Yeah. yeah. The funny thing is that I came, 
there was two groups at, at the start of DreamWorks. We were the Spielberg's uh, people. You know, I was part of the Spielberg studio, and then Jeffrey was trying to get the the Disney people. You know, and yeah. so that was that was kind of funny because we were the the Spielberg team, and and we we met over there at DreamWorks, and we we kind of made new friends, and it was it was nice. It was a yeah. little so was, was, was it. Uh... Because, you know, coming from Europe, they were like, oh, we're going to teach you how to make animation. <laughs> and so, and those guys, I remember, uh, you know, uh, all my friends and uh, European people, I mean, they were like, yeah, a lot of people from Europe, like Spanish people from Italy, uh, England, Germany, you know, all of Europe. Mm -hmm. And we're a group of artists coming to L.A. And uh, and so, yeah, at that, that first it was like... Uh, it was it was nice. It was interesting, you know. Yeah. And uh, um, did you did you know some of the American animators by name and reputation? I knew I knew James Baxter, but oh, okay. he, he he actually he, because of the Lion King. I remember seeing the the monkey that he did in the Lion King. I was so so impressed. And so, uh, but he joined us uh, one year after. I think he started in 96 or 97. And the funny thing, I remember the Disney artists didn't want to work on Prince of Egypt for some reason. They were like, oh, Bible movie. We don't want to work on the Bible movie. <laughs> because most of the, I remember James and uh, Kathy Zelinsky and some other artists, they, they, they signed up for El Dorado for the second movie. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, the first one, I think the only Disney who worked on on uh, Prince of Egypt was the, was Duncan Marjorie Banks. He was the only one. But and then and then James joined us later. He helped us on Prince of Egypt. But uh, but yeah, I mean at at the time, you know, we were like, oh whatever, you know, we would we 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 want to work on you know anything. Anything was good. Just being yeah. in Los Angeles was so new and working for, you know, because DreamWorks at the time was a big thing. I mean, those guys were playing the big boys, you know, Gilbert, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. Attenberg and David Geffen. They, they were making the cover of, of you know, all the, 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 the magazines. And yeah, everything. the Hollywood Reporter oh, and Variety. Oh, and, yeah. yeah, they were everywhere. Yeah, you know, they were the, the, the golden guys. And, and so we, we were, you know, having so many people coming to see us like bill gates was coming over to the studio and everyone <laughs> so we were like oh my god you know so anything and and then just we had everything they were giving us the opportunity to express ourselves in our you know the whatever we wanted to do yeah we were able to do you know so it was, it was great at the time i remember it was really exciting well, and, and I want to dig a little deeper there because Prince of Egypt, uh, you know, our fan base uh, of listeners, all seven of them, they're really <laughs> into Prince of Egypt. They have fond memories of this movie, right? Um, there's a lot of nostalgia for that film. Um, and, and I have that same nostalgia too, and my kids do too, because the music was so good. But uh, so you did, uh, you did Older Moses, right? Um, I started with the Sferio, actually. Oh. I, was, I was given the old the Ferio and and he dies pretty soon in the movie. Uh -huh. So and I I was able to actually animate almost all the footage from that guy I animated myself. Oh. And then and then I jumped into uh, supervising all the Moses. Uh, so I, I I went from a character with very little footage from a character for the main character of the movie where I had a, a team of 30 animators to supervise. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. That, wow. so, yeah, there was, there was a lot of work, but it was very exciting. The well, only thing that I didn't, I didn't manage to do as much as I, I wanted to do just because you're at your desk and you kind of fix, you have a long line of people coming at your, in your office just with their animation. Uh, can you do a drawing and can you put that on model and blah, blah, blah. So, but that was great. There was a lot yeah. of work. And I want to specifically dig dig into the the drawing and the animation side of uh, Prince of Egypt, meaning you guys yourself, but also a lot of the Disney animators that were coming over had come off of a slightly more cartoony films, y yourself especially, like Balto and some of those films and Five Will Goes West and things like that. This was probably one of the most, and it still is, one of the most realistic and subtle films uh, that's ever been done in 2D. I think it's up there with Pocahontas 
um, uh, but I would say even more subtle. How was that for you, but also the rest of the staff to kind of, who'd really done a lot of cartoony work to dig into this very realistic, subtle, slow moving yeah. animation. I, I'd serious say topic. Moreover, moreover than that, that we were, we were almost forbidden to use live action reference. Oh, we, really? That's surprising. Forbidden. I shouldn't say that, but I, I, I heard from the animators and then Jeffrey told us that he had, we, he, he didn't have a good experience of, uh, like a Pocahontas or, or other yeah. movies where he had you uh, action live action reference with, with photo stats and stuff like that, you know. And so we actually used live action reference, but it was like on our own, you know. We're it was not a studio thing. It was, yeah, it was, our neighbor's studio. it was just like doing our own thing. But and so it was it was quite interesting. But yeah, it was it was challenging, and. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it, I took it as a challenge, and obviously, I don't know. I mean, there was a drawing skills. We you have to be very. To have, I don't know. I've always had the the standard that I just wanted to make the to do the best I could. So it's like drawing Moses, and I remember I would, I would just try try to draw every day, and you know, all trying to to meet the standard that uh, they, they, those guys wanted. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, it was it was a little, I don't know. But you're considered. I mean, that's it's funny hearing you say that 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 was a struggle. But I mean, you're considered to be one of the best draftsmen that ever lived in 2D animation. Oh, I've oh, oh yeah, no, I've heard that so many times. And I've and if you and for the listener out there, please go on to YouTube and check out uh, Christoph Saran's uh, animation reel. There's a couple sites that have reposted your work and stuff on YouTube. Um, what you'll see, dear listener, is that Christoph uh, is excellent at keeping volumes very solid. I mean, your animation is so solid and it's so well timed. There's so many good acting choices in there. It really just hits on every level. And uh, that's me gushing on you, of course, but um, the listener will, will go check out your work and they're going to see that I'm not lying, that this is true. Uh, you draw really well. That's funny because the thing is that I really loved, I was so much in love with drawing before I started to animate. Yeah. And once I started to animate, drawing became the struggle. It be became difficult for me. Mm. It became, all of a sudden, I had to, just keep at it and I had to, to you know to work a lot at it just to make the drawing look good you know I, I kept at it and because the result was what I was uh, aiming for you know I, I know some of my friends they take a great pleasure in the, as, at doing it the, the process of doing it they're really happy drawing I yeah. wasn't happy drawing it was a struggle for me and really? you know remember when I worked with uh, I, I learned with a French guy you know and you probably did the same thing when you started in 2D animation you start as an assistant right yeah and then yeah. work under an animator a season guy and then you you, uh, you know get their, their tricks and you learn from them and my animator it was the opposite he was really happy doing the work at his desk every time he, he went to the camera shooting his drawing he was a little disappointed it was uh, you know, it's just not what I wanted to do. It was, and then I was the opposite. At my animation desk, I was struggling. I was like always doing. I was never happy. I was like oh, I was never going to work. And then I would shoot my 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 scene. I was like, oh well, it, it doesn't it doesn't look that actually. You know, if I, I fix this and this and this, it might look okay. You know, it, I don't know if it's because you know you got trying for drawings a second, so you don't <laughs> you don't see the mistake. Right. You know? Right. But, but the drawing for me became a mean to do acting. It, it yeah. was not a, the drawing. It was just about being able to to make the character live and move and and so. But the drawing was was a struggle. It was always, and this is probably the reason why I didn't really mind the transition in the in the digital digital world because I didn't miss the drawing. You know, when I went into animation, animating in 3D, I was in love with animation. I've always been in love with, I, you know, it's like, I don't know if you know a, a good friend of my, uh, Dan, Dan Wagner, he's a uh, head of animation at DreamWorks. And he yeah. told me once, 
and it's so true. It, he said, if you are, um, if you love acting more than drawing, then you'll be fine transitioning to 3D. But right. if you oh. love more than acting, then you will you will have problems. And I know. I, I I must admit, I was probably the the latter. I I liked to draw. Yeah. And acting was also a fun part of being an animator, but uh -huh. I did not make that transition very well. I didn't love CG animation for that reason because it took a lot of the pleasure out of of the uh, process. I got some from friends the same way. I don't know if you know yeah. that good friend Patrick Mate or like yes. my good friend Nico Marley. You know, he's he's a fantastic designer. And, but he was an animator before. I, I, he was one of my students, actually, in Goblin when I was a teacher over there. I, I went wow. to teach Goblin. Wow. And one of my uh, students that I actually ended up hiring in Amblimation, and they ended up enjoying it later on. But uh, um, so these guys, they love drawings, and they're so good at it, you know. Yes. And I, I don't think, you know, this is this imposter syndrome <laughs> that everybody has. That, yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm just ruining my drawing, and uh, they're going to see the old world is going to see that I'm not that great, and that that's that was me. You know, I was doing drawings like, oh no, it's it's horrible. It doesn't work. It's never going to work. And and so since I've started in, in 3D animation, I don't draw that much, and I I don't really miss it. I you know I should shame myself because. I know I shouldn't say that. When I tell that to the drawing to the students, like I don't really draw that much and I don't miss it. Really? Yeah. Oh, God, they, want to, they want to cry. I'm sure. Yeah. They're just like, it's, no. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know, I shouldn't say that. That's a blasphemous. But that's, uh, you know, I, I went back a little bit in 2D doing that short that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, the uh, bird, bird karma. karma. Bird yes. karma. Beautifully fun. drawn. Yeah. Yes, it was great. That's from my good friend and, and former student and former assistant, William Salazar. Um, and uh, he actually, <laughs> he had to insist. I didn't want to do it, but uh, I had to because I had to repay my debt because he was my, one of my best assistants. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, so I, I, did, yeah, okay, I worked you. hard for you for years. You're going to help me on this, Christoph. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know all your secrets. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, but I was really happy to help him. And, and it actually, uh, you know, I went back to um, doing animation in 2D and I loved it. And, uh, you know, I I might, now that I'm back, I'm back in Paris, I might just go back and, and go and, you know, draw a little bit. Yeah, yeah, oh, do a little yeah. short. Yeah. We'll, we'll hire you for the same low cost. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, Pablos wanted me for for his clouds. I mean, he was he yeah. kept calling me and said, "Hey, we we have a couple of shots with your name on it. You know, when you whenever you're ready." Well, you know, I was busy doing other things. But well, did you regret that? I mean, you've seen Klaus, right? It came out on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, no, great. What did you think? I I thought it was great. I would have loved to do it, but I was you know doing. I was at DreamWorks doing some. I was really busy, you know. On, Cruise or I don't know what it was doing, but right, yeah, it, cruise. Uh, you know, I would have done it if you know. I, don't, I was twenty-five years old. I would have done. It. Yeah, yeah. You would have done both. <laughs> right, yeah. Tom's still doing that. You know. Oh, I'm I'm gonna do this project and this project and run a studio. <laughs> Well, I got to say, you it's funny hearing uh, your humility about your draftsmanship um, and that um, that you felt you had that imposter syndrome of of not being good enough, because I remember those days when, you know, Tom and I were at at Disney in the uh, 90s uh, when all you guys were coming over and starting DreamWorks. And I got that call from Jeffrey Katzenberg, too. You know, he was trying to <laughs> woo me over to direct something over at DreamWorks at the same time. We were making Mulan at Disney. Um, but I remember the impression was, um, and Tom, I'm sure you'll remember this too. It felt like all the European animators that were coming over were far superior draftsmen. There, there's just, I think there's this kind of persona because of the European comic books and the things that we've seen for years coming from Europe that the drawing standards were so much higher than they were in Europe than they... I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if you know this, Michelangelo, uh, uh, he came from Europe. Yeah, yeah, see, well, look, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, 
Because you guys had all these classic influences yeah, of like great Marcello, painters and draftsmen. Andrea Torto and all these guys and Rembrandt and <laughs> yeah, know. we didn't we didn't have that training in school. It was well, like yeah, you know we're looking at Tex Avery and stuff like that. Yeah, but these days are over. I can tell you in art schools now. I mean, I went to the Beaux Arts in Paris. Yeah, nineteen eighty something. Oh my God! And I was looking at the place is beautiful. The place is amazing, and you see all the beautiful drawings and hangs on the walls from the uh, 18th century, 17th century. But what they teach now, it's it's nothing. It's not that great. It's just modern art. It's like oh my god. So it's not it's not academics. And yeah. so you know, but uh, that's funny that you said that because when you worked on Mulan, you might have uh, known Hans Hans Backer. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah, he was our production designer. And we. Yeah, we worked on, uh, I worked with him on, on Balto. On Balto. And he was saying, yeah. yeah, he was looking at our animation. He was like, oh my God. But at Disney, they don't have people that draw like you guys. I was like, what is he talking about? Wow. I you think know? that, you know, it's and one of those. The, that's uh, the funny thing. Like, and it, 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 yeah. It's, you know, it's the grass is greener on the other side of the hill. You know, you always think that, oh, the other guy is doing it better than we are, you know, at a comparison, I think. Definitely that. Well, I remember even when I was at Goblin, there was a guy who came from New York, uh, John Canemaker. You know John oh, Canemaker? Sure. The, yeah. the great animation uh, animator, animation historian. And he came to the Goblin in 1981 or 82. And he saw what we were doing in the class. And he was like, you know what? The Disney studio is actually looking for new animators because the old timers are going to retire. And so we, you should send your work to Disney and then you're looking for youngsters. Like, you know, you're very talented. And we didn't believe him. We thought he was crazy. You know, <laughs> I was like, we, we didn't even speak English. You know, the guy was like, you know, we had a translator and we really didn't know what he was talking about because Disney at the time was, and, and Los Angeles was the, the, you know, it was like another outer space. It was the planet Mars. It was just, yeah. there, now it was, it's different because now the world is getting smaller. You know, uh-huh, the, yeah. and they speak English and, and now with the with the internet and everything, everybody knows about. It. But at the time it was really, really different. So uh Yeah, then it was it was intimidating. It was just far it was outside of your impossible, probably like yeah. it just seemed impossible to go there, right? Like Mount Everest. That's right, yes, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. But I would say even my the move when I moved, the biggest move I made was to go from from Paris to London in ni- in 1989 wow. just because and it it seems really close you know Paris London is nothing now that you have the tunnel you have the train mm. now, at a time we didn't and I didn't speak English so my move coming from Paris to London was way bigger than coming from London to Los Angeles because coming from London or from Paris to Los Angeles it was okay. I mean, I, I used to work with um, American movies with, you know, Steven Spielberg studio and I spoke English and I, and when I arrived at DreamWorks, half of the crew was from Emblemation. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, Simon Well, and Steve Heckner, and I, I had a lot of friends. So yeah. it was just like, well, it's a nice place. It's, it's a sunny place. It's really nice. It's great. <laughs> and so it was not a big move for me, but you know what it is. It's, it's just a matter of perception. I yeah. Guess. It yeah. really is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk, Christoph, about that transition from 2D to, to CG. So here you are, a master draftsman. You've really perfected your animation. You may not think that at the time, but you did. Um, <laughs> and, and then uh, everything starts shutting down. Tell us when you saw that change happen. Did you see it coming? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because when we worked on Sinbad, it was we were you know we felt like the the movie was not going to be a success. The same for Disney at the time we were working on, was it Treasure Planet or what was it? I don't remember. Maybe. No, the the last movie that they worked on, the last two D movie that they did. Oh, uh, did a Home on the Range, maybe. No, it was before that. Atlantis. Uh, Maybe Atlantis. I don't know. I think it might have been Atlantis. But anyway, the thing is that we were working on the 2D movies, and I think uh, we kind of knew that the 2D was going down and 3 was going up because we had Shrek, you know, in uh, 2000. I think it was 2001 that Shrek 
big mm-hmm. success. And then Simbad was a little bit at the same time, and and he, he it bombed at the box office. So, and but the thing is that in my case, at the time when we went when we made the transition from hand-drawn animation to uh, CG animation, I, I was already, n- I was not animating anymore at the time because they gave me the, the I was head of animation on Spirit and Simban. So yeah. I had to, they, they gave me the supervision of all the animation department plus the cleanup department. Oh, so wow. I was so much, that I didn't really draw anymore, you know, yeah. because, uh, you know, I was the head of animation on, on their 2D movies. And, the the fact that they offered us the training in 3D in CG training like they did at Disney the same right yeah uh, for me was a way to go back to animating mm. you know? uh, it was not animating at the time the last uh, shots I did were on El Dorado and then a little I did I think I did two shots on Spirit or three shots although I was uh, you know I was head of animation but I didn't animate yeah. And, so the frustration was, you know, I think I went to be f- being frustrated because they they were dragging me into the production side or some, you know, and I, I didn't really like it. So. Yeah, because you were more a supervisor, managerial position. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they wanted. Yeah, they wanted to turn to turn me into a manager, and you know, I wanted to see an artist. So, so the fact that they were offering the 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 the, the CG training. I really went into it and, and, and I went back to animating and it was a pleasure. So I, I, I just just went back to animating with the CG transition. And yeah, was, and, 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 and like you like, said, it, you, were, you were in love with the idea of being an actor, right? Yeah. And, and trying to perfect your acting performance. So CG it's, meant a lot more refinement, right? You could do subtler yeah. acting moves and eye movements, and, That's right? That's it. Yeah, you're right, because the thing is that I've always been a little more realistic. I did some cartoon, and you mm. were mentioning uh, Boris the Goose, and uh, Boris the Goose was, was more cartoony, but it was not slapstick like Take Savory or like the, you know, the genie in Aladdin. It was a little more um, grounded. It was a funny character, but I remember looking a lot at, at the real animals when I was doing the, the, the goose or when I was doing dogs. I really had to go and analyze. And so I've never really been a cartoony animator per se. Yeah. And so in CG animation, you're right. We're able to go deeper into the subtleties. And, uh, and so yeah. I, I, yeah. And, and I, the I think that, that's what people love about CG, right? Is that it's, um, they, they miss it about 2D because there's just as many people that really love the, the more cartoony. And I'm even just talking about Aladdin. Uh, and Jasmine, like that level um, of it's still fun and, and simplified and all that that you want out of an animated film, but has some of the subtler acting here and there. Um, it's kind of just perfect. But uh, so tell us about like, you know, you worked on Shark Tale. I think that was your first CG film. Yeah, I, I really didn't like it <laughs> for some reason. Well, yeah, I don't and- yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why I didn't like it. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I remember why. Because <laughs> I was, I started on Over the Hedge. Actually, I signed up for Over the Hedge, which was a movie that were uh, being made in the same time. And yeah. then, starting on Over the Hedge, I, uh, I it was part of our training in 3D. Uh, we were trained on Maya, and um, and then we started on Over the Hedge. But Over the Hedge stopped and went back to writing. And so they had a full crew mm. and they didn't know what to do with it. So we went to help on, on Shark Tale for six months. Oh. And so we were just helping out on Shark Tale. But the problem, I, I don't know, for some reason, I didn't like this movie. And I remember not being able to f- figure out whether the, those, those uh, fish were moving like humans or like fish. <laughs> yeah, right. They I broke was, all the rules. You know, like, yeah. There was not any 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 rules or any standard or anything. They hadn't really find out or or uh, so <laughs> any any try like hey, what are you we doing? So, I don't know. That and, comes and down was, to the yeah. director, honestly. I like, okay, are we having them going up and down vertically as if they were walking or are they <laughs> are they going yeah, or the horizon, horizontal all the time? Oh, yeah. Like all the time, like real fish, or like or like real human with with their fins or, or arms. Yeah. So 
Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, it was interesting because I learned a lot from this movie technically. But as far as acting and designs and the movie itself, I don't have you know a lot of memories for this thing or good memories for some reason. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of animators that worked on it. And they all say the same thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that <laughs> that movie, yeah. but there's you know every studio has that movie where yeah. people are yeah. like, right. yeah, yeah, I didn't really enjoy that. We got through it though. I want to I want to throw it. Disney's you know. I enjoy it and watching it. Watching it was, it's, it's not a bad movie, I, I think. Yeah. And that's funny how you remember, and you must say, like you remember experience. When you watch the movie you worked on, it's like it's hard to be a, a good audience or like to watch Yeah, because you remember the people and the meetings and the arguments and the, yeah. You watch the scene and you, you can't really stop remembering the people and the arguments, yeah. situations and, and some, you know, so it, I should watch again all these old movies like El Dorado or Oris Ball Tour. I haven't watched. I should. I should. Yeah, I should try that. Maybe. Well, now is the time that I would enjoy. That, I want. I want to back up just a little bit to El Dorado. That's another nostalgic film for a lot of people. Oh yeah. And I remember every time I've seen it since, but which hasn't been much, but I've seen it uh, a little bit referenced here and there. It's a beautiful looking film. It's got great animation, production really, design, yeah. Really irreverent characters. Like, like yeah. there's yeah. a very oh, yeah. sexy girl, very adult kind of such, uh, subject matters here and there. Um, so a very different yeah. way to go, right? Uh, do you have fond memories yeah. of that production? Yes, that was fun. The only thing that I remember, I, I didn't really, I was not sure being the horse. I, I Jeffrey really insisted for me to do the horse i remember he was like i wanted to do the villain and then i was like yeah i'd like to do the villain and uh but he wanted me to do the horse for some reason and i i did it i was like okay I, mm -hmm. you know but the movie itself was great just because we had so many great artists like uh i mean james baxter yeah for the nation he did the test on tulio and miguel and shell i mean the first test that he did um, on Chell. The, the first animation was done by James, and then he, he was taking over with a, by another animator. But um, but also Didi Conrad, one of my friends, who did the design, and Ram Ramon Ramon Zeback, who did the uh, the uh, art direction, and you know, so we had a great great team. It was, it was mm. and so yeah, no, I had uh, very good memories for this movie, and uh, and I kind of learned the horse animation working on that horse and this is probably the reason they gave me the head of animation on spirit because i had done the horse on the lorado oh of course uh, yeah. okay the horses but then actually james was the the man who did the horse on, on spirit he was really the yeah i've seen some of his shots that are just jaw dropping yeah, no i mean the, we were so lucky to have him coming to dreamworks you know i remember yeah. when he came to help I mean, he, he did some tests with Eldorado, and then he helped out on Prince of Egypt, and then Eldorado, and then Spirit was unbelievable, you know, in terms of animation. I mean, you know, this guy is... We did a podcast with uh, James Baxter, and he's yeah. as... He's yeah, as oh, you did? Yeah, he's as humble as you are. Yeah. and, and um, But he's one of those, you know, from the outside, all of us, all of us three here too, I'm sure, um, looking at James, we go, he is like a a quiet giant in the industry yeah. he's like he doesn't you know speak up really much you know he's not you know loud and proud or obnoxious like you think he could be um he's just everything he does is masterful i think we all have i, I haven't met one person in animation that don't speak you know really highly about james baxter's animation uh, technically and drawing wise and then Glenn Keane, of course, is the other big rock star of our industry. But in, oh, yeah. in Europe, and this is transitioning to you now, <laughs> in Europe, uh, Christoph Saran has that reputation. I've always heard that about you, that in Europe, you stand out as one of the true masters, uh, that you're a legend in the animation industry uh, because of what you've done in the U.S. and in Europe. What is that for you now? Um, what does that mean to you? Where you're at now, uh, you've said you've taught, uh, so you've brought up like the younger generation. Um, 
Tell us a little bit about what it is to be in the European animation market, especially where you're at right now. Uh, I've always kept uh, a relationship with uh, between, uh, I mean, with Europe, and especially with France, mm. and mostly with France actually, <laughs> because this is my home country. And so every time I was coming back, I, I would go visit the, my friends and the studios and the schools and talking about my experience in in LA and in the States because the, the, the young people are really, you know, fascinated. It is the American dream. You know, it's always the same thing. Oh my God, it should be so great. So I was kind of trying to tell them the experience and, uh, and also trying to, uh, well, yeah, I, the animation in Europe, I must say that coming back now to Europe, I have to learn. You know, it's it's kind of almost a culture uh, shock in reverse. <laughs> 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 After being, uh, you know, I've, I've spent 25 years in, in, in the U.S. Although I was coming back, I really discovered what they're doing right now. And uh, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, I discovered the great movies. Like, for instance, um, there was the, this one, the feature, uh, I Lost My Body. I don't know if you heard. Of oh, I lost I lo yeah, I love that film. I watched it. Yeah, it's yeah. very European. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like there is, I think, in, in there's European, French animation, Japan animation, and, and American animation. And there's just, the, you know, they're very, their own specifics. And it's very different. What I don't like in France is that when, or anywhere else, is like people trying to copy American animation yeah you know i think they should keep their you know their own ways and their own specifics and culture and yeah. this is why when i come back to europe i have mixed feeling about you know um whether they, they they're they learn so much from other cultures and other animation technically and and yeah. from the talents you know but but they, they should try to express themselves you know, well, what so, makes a European uh, story different? Yeah, like what are what is to you what is unique about uh, European animation uh, for the audience? I think there's it's a culture thing. There is this uh, the culture and the tradition, the traditions of being an auteur. You know, the authorship uh -huh. this is like the, the, the more first, personal. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's more personal. When they start to do a, a movie, it it's on the personal level. They don't think globally about an audience. They don't want to entertain the world. They, uh -huh. uh, this is a culture thing. You know, it's like in America, you want to share to the world what you like. So you, you want to really entertain. Yeah. And in France, they, or in Europe, but mostly in France, they want to express themselves, hoping that other people will share what the, 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 the artist has yeah. put on the screen. You know? Mm -hmm. And also the market is different because they, they, you know, the director is, you know, it has the the the, right, the final cut on the movies. It's mm. not the studio. It's the, the movies, the features are not made by studios. Uh, they, it's a different system. So or independent. You, yeah, it's more like the yeah, in, independent, independent movie. And then yeah. the director is really the master, is God. Yeah. Know? And, yeah, and so good when, stuff. I'm going to... I'm going to tag you on this. So there's a little bit of uh, hypocrisy to what you just said. Okay, get ready. <laughs> Here you are, the European, saying uh -huh. that you want to you want to make that those kind of you know that they shouldn't be trying to be American. And here you did in Europe. You did Balto. We're back in an American tell. So yes. you were actually one of the very first people saying, which are very much a Disney style, right? They're more of a right. very American, American yeah. Movie. But that was an American themselves. studio. That's nothing European about animation. It was Spielberg studio. Yeah, nothing I know. European. Very you Hollywood. Know, yeah. Like, you can compare to Illumination. The minions are done by the French. But is there anything French in there? There's nothing French in the, the Illumination, like uh, uh, the uh, Despicable Me. Yeah. It's just like it's made in France because it's cheaper. That's all. Yeah, that's all. You yeah. Know, but but I mean, to, to go along with that, are your students now, present day, going, pointing to those films and say, I Balto changed my life. Uh, you know yes. what I mean? Are they going back to those sort of more Americanized ones? Uh, holding well, up pretty yeah, high? Yeah, I think it's just because, you know, when you're a kid, you watch animation, you don't care where it comes from. 
You know, it's like you, yeah. you just go in and you watch on TV. And I think you, I'm, I'm sure you had the same experience that you watch something and you think, oh my God, this is my, all my childhood. Yeah. I remember I grew up with the Smurfs, for instance, when I was a kid, but not the movies, the books, the because books. There was, they were made in Belgium. So there yeah. was no Hannah Barber yet. You know, and then I, when I went to the, the, the US, I came there and then uh, all, some of my co-workers, they said, oh, I grew up with the Smurfs. And I went like, you grew up with the wrong ones, the bad <laughs> ones. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I grew up with the good ones. The, you know, so it's, it's really different. You know, uh, when you're yeah. a kid, uh, the only thing is like, uh, I remember asking, and this is something I usually ask the, 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 the you know, my friends or family or co-workers, what's the, the, the first movie you ever saw in your life going to a cinema and do you remember the movies you first saw um yeah i mean it would have been um uh, who framed roger rabbit or even earlier oh, yeah. than that i remember in high school we saw the black cauldron black was cauldron that was one of the, yeah unfortunately not a good start yeah the, the first one i saw in my life and i remember because when you're a kid you go into cinema it's an event right you go with your parents yeah. or with your family the first one i saw with mary poppins and my, my mother, my mom, the first one was Snow White. She's 90 years old. And 80% or 90% of the population in the, in, the, in the Western world have seen the first movie as a Disney movie, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's true. Bambi that's true. or whatever, yeah. And yeah. anyone who has seen it other than Disney, they are really an exception. So, right. you know, this well, is... Yeah, and that's true. I think you're right that um, there's, you know... One thing that America is good at, and particularly Disney, I mean, let's face it, is marketing and being very loud and proud and getting things out there in a big universal way. More I important mean, than that, being appealing to the world. I mean, this is yeah. beyond the marketing. You know, you can put all the marketing you want in a bad product. Yeah. You know, it's like it won't last. But but Disney lasts because of the appealing to the the old Which world, I think. Ironically, right. they're European stories. A lot of the early right Disney films are European stories. Um, but you're right; they did kind of commercialize them even back then. Well, yeah, the story Little Mermaid does not die at the end, uh, like in the original story. Yeah, it's not dark; it's happy. <laughs> Yeah, right. some of the tales are really dark coming from Europe, but uh, yeah, the Disney. And s some of Europeans are not happy about it. They were like, ah, Disney, you know. They're right, really, yeah, they're sabotaging they're our, sugary, our original stories. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they put a lot of sugar in our really, you know. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, Disney is so good at even, you know, marketing themselves and those, you know, uh, we talk about them as being classics because in the 90s, uh, yeah. Disney was the one that came up with that. You know, this is like when it came out on VHS tape, you know, Bambi was uh, a golden classic or something. And there was this whole thing they made up about uh, this just came out of the vault. So it was like special, yeah. like oh, a yeah. piece of gold, you know, you know, so they created that whole vault thing where all the films are like tucked away and every once in a while they bring out a cherished gift to the world. We're going to re-release this classic. Oh, and, and you better get it quick because it'll go back into the vault. It'll go back in the vault if you're not careful. <laughs> so you got to buy it quick. Yeah, they were so good at that, especially in the 90s. I think there was this whole, um, you know, they just kind of uh, created their own mystique uh, of make, making everything special. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but uh, you know, if you even if you go back in history, you know, in the Mickey Mouse in the 1930s, it was really huge. I mean, it was really huge. You yeah, know, this, this thing, you know, and the parks and everything. So, but European animation. Go back to your question. I, I think there is specifics to European animation as being you know different, but it's it's kind of the. I don't know. I mean, there is, you could mention the Japanese animation is very specific and it's very different. Now, being, being a French, it's always difficult for me to define what is um, French or European animation is probably easier uh, from an outsider. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. outside, like, oh, this is it. Because when you're really into it, uh, I think it's really linked to comic books because there is a big comic book industry in France yeah. and in Europe. Yeah. You know, in in the states, it's more like uh, Marvel comics and stuff like that. And uh, in in the, I remember uh, talking to comic book artists from the U.S. and they were really 
uh, admiring the 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 books and the prints and uh, you know yeah. When, uh, yeah yeah i mean you know the, the yeah, quality- european comics are, are are something else i mean they've they've always <laughs> been a higher level of draftsmanship and color and printing and always hardbound you know not printing also that's a part of it tony they had a higher level of of quality in the printing too. yeah it made it more artistic it made it special you know yeah whereas yeah ours our our yeah. comics historically have been on horrible paper and badly printed and very cheap yeah and, and it wasn't really looked at as a great art form for a long time until you know until more recently actually and christoph to kind of go even deeper and to get more nostalgic again but when i first saw prince of egypt character designs it looked very different it was very european looking to yeah me. and do you think that was on i mean obviously it was on purpose but was that yeah. uh, that european sensibility because so many were were coming from europe i don't know it's hard to say you know i i was saying that uh, it yeah I, I mean you you mentioned this but at the time i was not aware of it i was like we want i mean we wanted to do something different at disney and that mm-hmm. was a even from jeffrey he, he wanted to do something different and so we went like okay we're gonna do this and this i must say that william salazar the uh, director the, the the guy who made bird karma he was the supervising animator on young um young moses and he's he's one of the artists who define that uh um, that design, you know, the proportions of the of more stretched the, you know, too. Like I remember the yeah, yeah, more like, of a stretched yeah, with feel, the nose and everything. So we yeah. we wanted to go a little different from Disney, but we were not aware that it was you know kind of more European or more you know we we're just hmm. trying to do something a little different that we liked. And just to uh, follow the note from, you know, from the directors and from Jeffrey and from, you know, so yeah. you know, we're trying to, we were really trying to do the best we could. That's yeah. always what I've been trying to do. It's just like, no matter what, doing the best you can. This is I I'm, think that's a, that's a great word of encouragement yeah. to the listeners out there. Yeah. Keep doing the best you can, no matter what. That's it. No matter what. You yeah, know. whether it's CG or 2D or whatever it is, try and yeah, reach that is. pinnacle. Yeah, even when you're a, camp, a carpenter or whatever, you know, try to do the best you can, you know. Yeah, I love That's, that. Now, think, where is where is Christoph right now? I, I, I know you're in France, but I, I get the feeling you made a reference to Netflix, so I have a feeling... Yes. That's my uh, employer. I'm, uh, I left DreamWorks after 25 years. Because uh, Mr. James Baxter gave me a call and said, you know, I'm on Netflix and I need help. Would you help me and, and take over that uh, part of the world? And so I'm uh, Netflix. And uh, Are you kind of supervising animation for Netflix in Europe? Yes, that's exactly right. That's what I'm, I'm doing. I'm supervising all the, anima- the character animation for the shows that's been uh, made. Produced, yeah. Uh, produced and actually made. Uh, they, they, the, um, this is the Netflix shows that are uh, outsourced to to Europe. Yeah, so. and and I know James has that job in the U.S. and started that. And so uh, well, you guys, he's, he's the he's my boss. <laughs> that is awesome. I, I mean, the job it sounds like. But it's like an animation quality control, right? I mean, that's kind of what you're doing is looking at all these um, European studios. They're, more, they've already. It's more like inspiring people. You know, wow. going to, I, I, I go into studios and give lectures and, and ask just the animators, what, what do you want? How can I help? How can I help you? What do you need? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I talking like uh, yesterday, I gave a lecture on lip sync, you know, and I, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, just presented a lot of different, my experience and, you know, kind of asking questions and reviewing their work and, I'm not in the position of interfering between the directors and the animators because the directors are in LA in Netflix. Sure. And so it's more like what do you need? And, you know, it's like, it, it's in, inspiring and in trying to get them. Wow. Wow. What a perfect role, uh, Christoph, for where you're at in your life. You've come to a point where you're a legend. You've done a lot of things, CG and 2d, You've created some of the best performances around in animation. And now to be able to give back and still have a job working for Netflix, creating great things, but more from that higher up position of 
inspiration and helping to keep the quality level high. That's, that's gotta be the perfect job. I mean, <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it, and I'm really happy because, you know, that came up as a surprise, but I'm really happy. I'm trying, then again, I'm trying to do the best I can and trying to do the, you know, trying to help as much as I can. Because when I, I went to Netflix, originally I went like, yeah, I'm interested, it'd be great, because I've always wanted to come back to my, uh, to my own country. And I said, yeah, I'd love to do it part-time because I, I'd love to do other things like teaching, going to schools and festivals. And the Netflix guy, they were, oh, yeah, but, you know, we're interested in, in this as well. You know, this inter inter is really interesting to us. So you can keep doing that. And so it's, it's wow. great. What, what you're saying is they're going to pay you to go to the festivals and stuff, but have a little <laughs> Netflix badge on. <laughs> yeah, I'm having my Netflix cap going to festival into the schools and yeah and you're probably helping them find new studios and uh, up and coming talent and yeah, things like that yeah, too yeah that's it I mean this is a win-win situation because those those kids they're dreaming of working for the big companies like uh, Disney yeah. or Netflix or Illumination so I'm kind of a uh, helping out uh, both sides here perfect oh, job so great Nice. Now, Tony, at the beginning of the podcast, and I've been thinking about this the whole podcast, Tony established that you were younger than us. And I, I know oh, it's, it's driving me I crazy. was being generous. Hey, I was, yeah, it's your hair that makes it feel that way. And you have such a spry uh, you have way a about you. hair, but it is, it is all white. You say, uh, you look long, young. I don't know. <laughs> uh, are you, are you going to say your age? Will you, will you reveal oh, it? Oh, I'm, I'm 61, actually, this year. 61. Oh my goodness. Okay. So oh, yeah. I'm I'm younger than you, but Tony's much older. <laughs> and yet we're <laughs> twins. Yeah. Yeah. Go figure. How did that happen? This is a hair difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christoph, this is a good uh we, you've been so generous with your time. Thank you so very much for being with us uh, well, on this podcast. This is a treat. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I mean, I'm really very pleased to be with you tonight. And uh, it was great. Yeah, it was really nice. I, I can't believe, to, like Tony was saying, that, that our, 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 uh, we haven't crossed paths more. And that this is really our first time meeting you. Uh, but I'm so glad we did because you really are the European Glen Keane. Oh <laughs> I just gave you a, a new title. <laughs> No, I'm not. Come on. Uh, <laughs> if you want to know more, actually, you, you should watch. I, they've been asking to uh, to uh, ask about to to talk my, about my life on. Uh, it's on Monday, I think. Is it Monday? It's called the Christoph's Cabinet of Curiosity. You know? Oh, I'm talking about my life, and they asked me to share all the great um, piece of art that's been inspiring me and uh, and uh, how why fun. So, yeah. yeah, you know, showing all the stuff that has been inspiration for me. That is so great. Thank well, you so have, have fun at that event. And um, yeah, we just we just hope to meet you in person once we can travel a little bit. Maybe we can show up at Annecy together and and, oh, and yeah. share a croissant. Been to Annecy. I should have talked about it, Annecy because this is my second home. I've got a home in Annecy. So my wife was born in Annecy. Oh, and my so God. This is where I want to. I wonder we're trying on this year. Every year, I'm going to see all my friends coming to see the uh, oh. animation. Well, I hope yeah, Tom and I can be there with you. Okay, yeah. so have next Netflix, time we uh, bring us up with you, okay? Yeah, talk to Netflix. Tell them uh, you have special <laughs> guests that you want to <laughs> come visit <Wow>. in Annecy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> hey, thank you very much again and for being on the Bancroft Brothers Animation Podcast. And thank Tom, you. as we always say... Animate, Animate from the heart. From the heart. Be sure to subscribe to the Pencilish Studios YouTube channel.